Welcome, old people. Welcome back to Tabletop Tuesday with Old Man Dan and Old Man Curtis. For us, right now, it's before Thanksgiving. And for those American viewers out there, Thanksgiving was last week. And it's all over now. (laughs) And so I hope you had a good one. And that uh, you've put on your winter weight in whatever gluttony that you uh, partook in over that time. And that, and that it was a happy day. And you enjoyed yourself. That's our Thanksgiving acknowledgement. Now, and you uh, watched episode three of our Mech Warrior 5 playthrough, which probably yes. came out over the weekend. Yes, absolutely. Make sure you're watching <laughs> all of the gaming videos happening on this channel right now. Hashtag uh, shameless plug. At, at the uh, at time of, of recording, uh, we have doubled our subscriber count. So thank you Yay. so much for coming to join us and experience this with us. Uh, I'm also pleased to say that the second most popular show on this very channel is Tabletop Tuesday. So turns out you don't mind out, looking at our just, two uh, mugs. Yeah. People just not digging that vampire. I really like it. <laughs> I really like Vampire. <laughs> you know what? I do too, and I'm going to finish it because I want to. And we got a comment today about how much one of our viewers in particular really enjoys Vampire over the Warhammer content. So the fact that they are in both places. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, okay. you know, I think that's pretty exciting. Excellent. Well, But just as a heads up, a lot of Tabletop Tuesday is still going to be Warhammer content. So speaking of which, I think it's time for Weekly Progress. So, Dan, uh, you know, OBS is an exciting and fun tool, and it has so many dimensions about what it can do, and uh, it can be a bit of a rabbit hole once you start getting into it and discovering just what's possible inside OBS. So, with that said, are you ready for a slideshow? Oh, sure. (laughs) I got all my stuff done this week. All of it done. Dude. Here are the three Gellerpox infected mutants Those in all of their glory. Look great, Curtis. Thank you very much. Even, Thank you very much. Oh my god. I, I okay, I dig the the guy on the right with the neon green mohawk. We're gonna that is fun. We're gonna get into him and we're gonna we're gonna show off some of the things. So let's get oh, into okay. the individuals just, here. Yeah. So this is the Great Axe Carrier, and uh, the Great Axe is a little bit stronger than the other weapons that the other Poxwalker mutants have. And as you can see, he's got tentacles coming out of his stomach. He's holding it with one of his tentacles. Again, lots of slime. This one is drier than a lot of the uh, glitchlings that we saw before, but, but still, I wanted to use up this pot of Nurgle's <laughs> Rot. And so you're gonna see you're gonna see lots of uh, spot tapping of of slime. Uh, here he is from this side. He's got a screw right in his hip. I love the big bolt in the hip. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Right? Does he have a load in his pants? What? Kind of, sorta. But we'll get to that in a second. Oh. Um, okay. And then I also other people paint the knobs on the back of the collar and the tip of the antenna differently. Some of them just leave the metal. Some of them do some stuff. I thought it'd be neat to have like electrical charge to kind of honor the fact that it's coming from mechanical okay. equipment. Okay. So you're going to see that on all three of them. Uh, it's really visible right here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They look like they look like lights. Yeah. 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 And that's kind of what I was hoping for is that they'd kind of look like either lights or like uh, you know those those uh, plasma balls that. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to... How do you streak? And Anyway, the point is, yes, you're picking up what I'm putting down. That's good. More slime in that gash right there. And yeah, the pants are hanging a little low, and I added just a little bit of uh, Wildwood Brown to the back, <laughs> so it looks like he might be leaking a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so foul. And uh, and then we've got... Uh, uh, we've got uh, his his shoelaces and his boots and everything. You know, just, I just think generally. He's got sneakers on. That or a sneaker because his other leg is not complete. But well, you can see that uh, it is a Doc Martin boot with a <laughs> hole in the back. 
<laughs> so he is truly a high school goth. He is ready. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, next guy is Hook Hand. And Hook Hand has got his entire left side is just completely bloated and just all gross and gangrene. This one was actually pretty simple. Of all of them, he ended up being the one that needed the least amount of time. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because once everything was done, then it was just a matter of uh, highlighting the details a little bit. So, you know, they got a grenade, all these bits and hoo-hahs. Wow. Not the same load in his pants that the other one had. <laughs> Which is weird, because how does, how does he wipe with just a hook for a hand? Well, um, you could see the skin on this other arm. That's, that's toilet uh, paper right uh, there. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, are, they are Nurgle. So, and this one, this one is also my favorite. He oh, was boy. a lot of fun to do. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, he's got his neon green punk mohawk. Uh, he's got the infection kind of spreading from his cut in his stomach. Yeah. Peg leg. Bone I, arm. I like that that right arm that looks like flesh that is like morphing into it's almost like calcifying into this giant scythe blade arm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's pretty vicious in combat too, which you'll learn all about in December. Oh, I'm sure I'll I'll yeah. Yeah. Uh but but uh, yeah, so the, from the back you can see same thing, more wood grain on that, uh, a a butt wart that has popped out of his pants. <laughs> That's the power so, of the butt wart. That is so gross, dude. And in addition to uh, to these three, I actually hit my stretch goal too, Dan. No, you might no. remember that last night while we were doing. Uh, GTA with the fellas I was like oh I'm just going to put some colors down well I finished him oh <gasps> that looks so good thank you that thank looks you very much so good oh my goodness so because he is drowned is great we're going to I'm going to show you some of the details on that all right I'll let you let you guide us through this I'm just there's a fish on his belt yes He's got a fi- okay. And in true Mordheim fashion, I painted it in bright green and turquoise like the old Mordheim fish used to be. <laughs> um, so you can see the the human is stuck here in his slimy hole. Lot again, lots of Nurgle's rot in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the side with the octopus tentacle body. That looks really great. So we've got a couple of eyes up here. I decided not to put any pupils in them because I kind of like the fact that they all kind of look like dead-eyed and and uh, vacant. It's well, yeah, but if you look, I mean, if you think about a, uh, do they have pupils like octopus? They've eyes? got. If um, you look at an octopus eye. It looks like a Cheerio in the center of their eye. Mm. It's like maybe big I'm thinking of sharks and... that just look like solid black ball in their yeah. head. Yeah, maybe that's what I'm thinking about. Like a doll's eyes. A doll's eyes. Jaws Seems movie in the seventies. Even... <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, so you can you can see the skin growing out of his shoulder, and then uh, and then the harpoon going through that big chunk of meat. Yeah. And then it's even be- easier to see like how that skin is changing over here. Yeah. And I'm really I'm really happy with how this transition turned out because it does feel like it's kind of growing into and off of what he's doing. And then we get a better look at our fish. The giant fish hooks in his shoulder blades look profoundly uncomfortable. That I mean, these are the things like some we, fishermen yeah. hooked him. And he broke loose. Yeah. And probably paid for their crimes. <laughs> in fact, the fisherman might be what's in the gut. Right. Currently being devoured. Right. Uh, and this one, because the base is so big, you can see that it was easier to make a transition from the rust to yeah. the uh, thing. So it, so it is a vast difference it's like, oh, it's just regular decking. Oh, no. No, the, the corrosion is, is starting to fill. Yeah. Although on those other minis that you showed us last week, I had no problem recognizing the corrosion on the metal decking. That was very apparent. So you did a mm. great job with that. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, here's the other side. He's got a little bit of a leather cuff on this arm. Ah! Uh, oh my god, he does. And, uh, and yeah. Yeah, so I... I Almost I got, an executioner's I hood? Looking yeah. like on the face, or is yeah. is that is that right? Yeah, no, that's it accurate. looks like a hood. It doesn't look like a fleshy. It is a hood. Head. It is a hood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man. So Dude, yeah, Curtis, you did an amazing job with this. Thank you. Thank wow. you very much. So that leaves three hulks left, and I. I actually got a little bit of a start on the next one too. Oh, awesome! Yeah. Wow, they look like they're fun to paint. They're so much fun to paint. They're so much fun to paint, and they're they're kind of easy to paint too. Because like I like I've talked about the last two weeks, it's a series of washes, and I am just getting the full use of contrast paints out of this stuff. It is uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. That's great. So wow. Dan, how's how's your progress going? Oh, buddy, I've got nothing. Uh, I am so glad I did not set that stretch goal for myself last week when I was like, oh no, well maybe I'll just do, and then I paused. I said, no, nope. no, nope, because I don't know what I'm getting myself into. I, sometime over the weekend or late last week, I, I hurt the, my neck, like right, my back, right between my shoulder blades. Oh no. And so leaning over to paint is incredibly painful. So I have made very little progress. I can only paint a few minutes at a time before it's just so excruciating that I can't sit in that position anymore. So I unfortunately didn't get a whole lot done. I've got the – I'm using desert yellow mm. as a base coat for anything that I want to be red or gold or like a white or dirty white color for for things like the uh, purity seals or the uh what's the word what's the english word for it like the the sashes the loincloth the mm. ta you know? tabards tabard so those are i've got all as oh and the, like they're white a lot of their their pauldrons have um like book mm -hmm. uh emblems on them that I think look. I mean, you could paint them metallic and say that that's just like a molded metallic insignia. But I right. kind of like the idea of it being an actual book that they've a like a holy book that they've affixed to their armor. Like, because you see that you, that's it's actually how it looks in in so much of the the source artwork. Mm -hmm. And when I played Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, all of the 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 mods that you could add not mods the um uh oh boy i'm just like the english language is is escaping me today the when you can go into your characters and mod up and uh, adjust customization customize uh, yes that's it the customizations my goodness ah <sighs> anyhow but that's that's as far as i've got so far um the 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 injury is feeling better. That's good. T today, so I think during this week I'll be able to proceed. That is so, uh, very one disappointing of the, update from me. One of the one of the problems of being an old man. Uh, yes, is yes. is that your body does betray you, and it does. And and let let me let you guess which very simple activity I was doing. To cause this injury well having been in your situation before uh my first guess maybe a little too obvious was sleeping that is correct that is correct went to bed fine woke up paralyzed yep don't know what i was doing uh i haven't been sleeping well lately so maybe i was just thrashing around i've been having a lot of nightmares lately uh, is it just, is it nightmares about the Gellerpox infected coming and and just <laughs> utterly obliterating uh, your squad of gray knights? Is that is that what's happening? Oh, not quite. That's my progress report <laughs> for the week. Uh, my goal for the week is to catch up. What, what what last week's 
I've got to get base coating on. That's that's what I'm going to focus on because I lost more than probably 70% of the week to not being able to sit and paint. Mm. Unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, no, I get that. Because I get old that. man. Old, because old man. I'm calling an old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Dan's goal is to catch up on the base coating, the base, base, base coating, yeah, yeah. base coating, yeah, yeah. yeah the base coating that he didn't do before. Uh-huh. So apparently it's coming through the screen, man. It's infected me too. <laughs> uh, and then I'm setting a really simple goal for myself because we are traveling to see family ah. this, this week. Okay. Uh, we leave tomorrow, in fact, uh, which is why we're recording on the day that we release as opposed to the day after we release. Which doesn't matter to any of you. Oh my God, you just got some behind the scenes. But um, yeah. uh, because of that, and because I edit this show in particular, I have to set a simple goal, and that will be to finish Fly Shoulder. Fly Shoulder. Oh, fly shoulder. ew. So that's the plan. That's the plan is to get that one done. All right. So yeah. So that is our weekly progress. People have been responding to me privately and through messaging on our Instagram account, which you can find at No Games for Old Men on Instagram, and telling me how much they've enjoyed our other tabletop thing segment. So oh. I think it's time to talk about other tabletop things. No Games for Old Men. Today's topic, Dan. Dice. The Can't bane of them. and glory yep. of every tabletop and role-playing gamer. Since since time immemoria, they have found dice made of bone yeah. in in uh in Egyptian and Roman archaeological sites. Yeah. Uh there is I, I have talking, it on We're talking BC times mm. these dice are. And I actually have it on very good authority, thanks to uh, historical records uh, that uh, dinosaurs also played with dice. Uh, you can see that in an episode of Dinosaurs from the early 90s. And so, you know, it's just one of those things that has carried on for as long as sentient beings have existed on this planet. Dice have been something that people have used and collected. And we have a good amount of time having bought and collected dice. In fact, I yeah. I have my four current dice bags here with me uh, so that we can go over some stuff. Um, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I heard it. I mean, that, was a, That's... that was a thud. <laughs> These aren't even all of my dice. These are my what? current dice. I used to have, in fact, it is still somewhere in the depths of of Scott's house. A giant bag that I used to carry all of my dice in that includes the collection that I started when we first played D&D back in the early, early, early 90s and uh, has my first dice... Do you remember your first dice set? (sighs) Not really. Um, No. Mm. I don't. I have the oldest that I can remember in my mm. possession, but I don't remember my first dice set. I don't, I, I know that when I was in, I want to say junior high, my cousin bought me the dungeons and dragons, basic, the red box. Mm. And it came with a set of dice. So that would have been my first set of dice, but I'd no longer have those. Mm. So those are, I believe those were all, donated or sold or something i don't know or possibly even just lost i mean lord knows maybe yeah maybe i remember getting my first real poly polyhydral dice set because you know you got dice as kids they're yahtzees and board games and blah 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 yeah those don't count yeah um so uh, uh, other old man jeff when he brought me into the D and D circle. Was like, "Hey, we need to go get you some dice." 
Like he was all about making sure I had all the equipment I needed so I wouldn't be made fun of by yeah. uh, by Scott and and uh, the other folks that were playing at that time. Ah. And uh, and so we went to Game Castle. Yes, in Fullerton, in Fullerton. For gamers of a certain vintage who lived in North Orange County, you may remember Game Castle near Cal State Fullerton. Yes, I interviewed. I almost got a job there. But when they called me back to offer me the job, I had already accepted another job. But mm. I could have been a Game Castle employee. And frankly, knowing who I am today, I should have gone that route. Mm. Having worked at another game store, mm -hmm. All Star Games in Diamond Bar, one of the mm -hmm. greatest in the world, and uh, RIP. Uh, RIP to Carol and Dave, who were just awesome. Um, I think you're glad you didn't work at Game Castle. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh <laughs> yeah uh well r.i.p to game castle too i don't think that's i don't think it's there anymore it doesn't it does not exist anymore yeah, no but uh that's but that shame. was that was uh i think i think that was a little bit of karma there everybody in the industry in orange county and south la county had a story about the owner of game castle Oh, but not to not to trade in rumors and gossip but like that's the tea like, too late yeah yeah <laughs> So uh, so we went to Game Castle, and he was like, you need these dice. And I was like, all right, yeah. what do I get? And he was like, well, you need a D20, you need D10. So he broke it all down for me. And the set that I decided on was a matte red tube of 10. So I got two percentile die, two D10s, three D6s. It was the full set. Yeah. And I was like, well, this, this is it. I'm ready. Let's yeah. do it. And I think it was maybe a week later before I was back at Game Castle and went, I want that seven set. I want that 10 set. I want that. And, oh. and my dice collection began. And so like immediately. Yeah. Yeah. No, Dang. I was I was addicted. I, I was had addicted. The same set for years. Mm. The same single set for years before I started building. Did did the set roll well for you? Because I know that was one of the reasons I that I wanted to get more. I wanted I wanted to have dice depending on mm. on like what I was what I was feeling and yeah. how the dice were rolling, which is still how I play craps in Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, yeah, you went uh, you went full Laura Bailey, didn't you? <laughs> I have not seen Critical Role. Oh. So, so I know that that is a reference that makes sense oh. to a lot of people, including yeah. many of our viewers. But yeah. I am, uh, uh, I am is... picking up from contextual cues yes. though, yeah, that yeah. she is a big dice collector, obsessed. Okay, okay. Yes, she needs uh, probably to speak to a therapist about her her dice habit. Oh, okay. It's become okay. unhealthy. <laughs> I don't know if I have the problem that bad anymore. I know when when. I, you know, got married, had my had my little family, uh, with me and Renee and and the dog. Um, that uh, uh, I stopped finding cool dice. Now I need a reason to buy dice, mm. and so every time I create a new, uh, a new D and D character, they get a set. Yeah, you gotta have so, a dedicated yeah. set for for. Gotta the have character. a dedicated set, huh? Yeah, yeah in fact. Let me pull out. Uh oh. So this dice bag, uh, in the fun burlap, this is my D and D dice bag. This is my kill team dice bag because it's got uh, Iron Man on it, and this was actually a gift from wife of old man Jeff, uh, uh -huh. Ami Ami uh -huh. Uh -huh. But then I've also got my 40k dice in this bag. This is Jeez. just a butt ton of D6s. Yeah. And then these are all my other game dice. So this is oh, for like goodness. Inquisitor and Mordheim mm. and Necromunda and just any specialty dice go in here. Okay. While we're on the focus of that, though, <laughs> because I was on television for so many years, I also bought ridiculous dice. This is the 40K dice tin that came out when 5th uh, edition came out. And it is imperial uh, dice. I th really thought there would be a lot more dice in there. 
Oh no! It's they, Games Workshop. No, they you get, really you did get nine. just give you nine dice, but well, there's room, there's room for twenty. <laughs> there's eight, and then a scatter die, which you don't use in the game anymore. Wow. Yeah, yeah, but they're kind of cool because they've got they've got you know bullet holes on them. Yeah, yeah. So they're all it's yeah. all bolter at, at holes least, actually. At least they're not just regular black dice, and you're like, okay, I paid twenty bucks for this. This would be fifteen cents a piece from the dice bucket at the that sits on the the checkout shelf at the game store. Totally, totally, totally. But Sometimes they give them away for free because they have so many. <laughs> just grab random and dice go. that that people leave in the game room. And they're like, well, all right, this goes in the dice bucket. <laughs> Claim it or don't. Somebody else will take it. The thing that I'm most excited about are the dice that you're going to have to face. Uh, when we do end up getting these two teams together, and these are my Nurgle dice. Oh, those are neat. So, Games Workshop came out with a variety of these specialty dice for the different races back at the end of 7th, beginning of 8th. So we're looking at like 2017, 2018. Are you telling me that there's a set of specialty dice for orcs that I don't... There, there are a couple different ones. Oh. So this is... it's. It's a piece of plastic inside of a hollow piece of plastic. So the boils and stuff are breaking through. Uh-huh. Um, not going to lie. They roll a little weird. They roll fine, but like <laughs> they're light. So they, you know, they're just, they just don't have the same it's, kind of heft. What you're saying is it's really easy to blame bad rolls on the dice. I certainly will be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So I I don't necessarily endorse the idea of spending a ridiculous amount on specialty dice, especially because Games Workshop charges you like thirty two dollars for twenty dice now. Oh, um, when you can get Goodness. a set of Chessex for like seven bucks. Man, but I um, think I might need to wander over to Geeky Tees and, and just just to see just to see what how much they're selling dice for. There's a trend right now for metal dice, but I can't get into Ooh. that because I'm going to hurt somebody. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that I want metal dice. So in addition to the big dice bag, in order uh-huh. to keep my dice separated by character, I have smaller dice bags. <laughs> and they go inside the bigger dice bag. And so these dice in How the blue bag... How do you know bag, which character... Like, years from now, how are you going to know which character was for each well bag of dice? The blue ones are for the sorcerer that I had in Jeff's campaign, uh, who I will show a picture of here now. <laughs> the red ones are for, uh, are for my bard character that was in... The campaign you ran, I think. And I'll show a picture of him now. Hmm. Uh, this one is just a really it's just a really good rolling D20. So I just keep it handy for all of them. Okay. And then I have this D8 and this D6 that are in fun fruit flavors. Ooh, I have uh, I have a D6 that looks like that one. Yeah, I keep these in case I ever have like a fire in, in embellishment or something on a weapon so that I can roll the extra damage and you know that that's where it came from. That makes sense, yes. Yeah, but you know, I just uh, I, see it. I, I just it. memorize which colors go with what. Oh, it's it's a little different. It's I think mine might be a little more orange. Oh, that is a little bit more orange, yeah. I feel like you and I probably bought these at your store, the store you worked at. That's probably at why All-Star? I have this. That's, That's possible. probably why I have this. I bought a ridiculous amount of dice at All Star. They had such a good run. They have so many good ones. Uh, so we talked about this blue being for for the sorcerer. This blue is for I remember uh, those. Yeah, these are for Hyrak Durgog, which is my dwarf cleric, which you can see right here. And uh, <laughs> yeah. This D8 just also happens to roll really well. So all my current characters that get played go in this bag. And uh, honestly, we could probably move some things around because haven't played as a character in a while. I've been DMing for, for so long. 
ladies and gentlemen and non-binary pals, we just had what happens at all gaming tables, which is I dropped the stupid dice and I had to go retrieve them underneath <laughs> my desk. And then what happened when I came back up? I hit my head on the table. Oh, F, no. F in the chat if you've had that same problem yourself. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's uh, that's my dice. Uh uh, what what's been, what's your dice experience been like, Dan? Have you counted them? Do you know how much how many of each denomination you have? Mm-mm. And I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You know what? Just the D sixes, Dan. Okay, this is the black bag of D sixes. Yeah. And these are the ones that I use for Inquisitor, Mordheim, etc. Like they they come in fun colors they these are almost all black and red because you know uh they're fun smoky like mm-hmm. marbleized but uh, i can line them up so i know like that i've collected them all at the end of a session cuz they come in in chunks of 12 or 36 depending on the size yeah but i i have not yeah, you could just buy a cube of D6s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I have a, a lot of that. The uh, the uh, 40K bag, which is the big big red bag, uh, it has, has the tiny kind, the little 12 yeah. millimeter kind, along with the big, like... That's the standard yep. size. But then I've got like this weird halfway size that's just a little bit smaller, just a little bit. A little bit. Huh. It's a millimeter difference. That's bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, and I got so many different colored dice because I wanted to roll all of my weapon profiles at the same time. Especially yeah. for third, fourth, and fifth edition of 40K. It just yeah. make it really fast. Just be like, all yeah. the black ones are bolters. Yeah. All, all the, the blue orange... ones are plasma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just toss them all. Yeah. That helps speed up the game. It does. It does. It does. And and you need that with a game of 40k with 2,000 point armies. Oh my lord! Well, just the number of dice that get thrown, even in a modern 40k game, is insane. Especially for orcs, uh, mm-hmm. uh, war boss. Yeah, you're throwing 48, 60 dice at a time. It gets ridiculous. Yeah, which is why I have in my Warhammer 40k bag, which I actually I have a I have one bag. That is. That's this one. Mm. This is my green velvet bag, and it's got my green, my green marble dice nice. in it. <laughs> and that's just my standard. That's my primary D and D. I I've used those dice for most of my recent characters, mm. mm-hmm. as far as I know. Just prior to that, I had a set of white. I still own them, but I don't use them. White game science dice that uh, with the last in-person campaign that we all played with Jeff as the DM, he mandated mm-hmm. that we all buy a set of game science dice. And so I still have those. But generally, I just use these these green ones. Uh, I, 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 I don't. I don't have a set of different colored D and D dice for every D and D character I I play. Um, I do have a couple of like I guess I'll call them legacy sets. I've got a blue translucent one that was probably I, that that's the one that I think is the oldest set that I have. That I can I actually th- remember games think, we've played with that. Yeah, I think those are probably the dice that I used in high school. Probably. I've got I've picked up like some assorted other random dice too. I've got one black D twenty that doesn't go with any other set of dice I have. And I'm wondering if it doesn't belong to one of you guys. Like how did I end up with just a single black D twenty somewhere? It's possible. Um, but also there were those times at All Star when they'd be like you could buy individual dice. They had them in, in like cookie jar things. True. And, and it you might could... have been a thing where I had a character that had an ability where I had to roll like two D twenty for something and I'm like, mm. well, I've only got one D twenty. I need to go I need another D twenty. So I went and bought a single D twenty. That's for five cents or something right. out of that tub that was on the counter. Right. That's probably what happened. 
Uh, so for 40k, that is when I did start going into, oh, I need a different set of dice for every army I'm gonna, I'm gonna have. So I do have a brick of 36 green speckled d6s for, awesome. for the orcs. And then when I bought in 2001 that inaugural Tau army box set, at the time I thought I was gonna go with a purple paint scheme. And so I mm. bought a brick of 36 purple D6s to go with those. Nice. I also have a set of white and red D6s that I think came with some box set that I have. Because they're 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 Warhammer 40k size. They're the little oh. tiny. They're the little tiny size. So they're 40k. They're probably from the original, uh, the original box set. Because the the second got, edition one that we bought. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because we bought how many sets of that did we get? Do we just get the one, or do we, yeah, we get just multiple? Got the one. As far as I know, we we just got the one because that's how I ended up playing orcs. You wanted the space marines, and the other the other army was orcs, and so that's why I ended up playing orcs. I still have that box. Do you really? Wow. Yeah, it's under a bunch of things right now, so I can't get it, but it it's holds <laughs> It holds so much. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, and it's, that and aside from the orange uh, D6s that come with Kill Team, uh, the Kill Team starter set that I bought, or no, the Octarius box set that I bought, that, right. <laughs> that, that is, that's my dice collection. I don't, I've got just, so many kill team this dice. bag that's pretty much the extent of it aside from my one little bag of d6 or um, dungeons and dragons <laughs> dice but i don't have four bags of dice yeah i think you're you've gone way overboard and we need to have an intervention on your that's behalf. possible are you these are th and you know what it's hard to find a good dice bag anymore these dice bags that i have Mm -hmm. are actually really old. This is the most yeah. recent one that I have, and it was really hard to find. I don't even remember where I got it. Huh. And every other dice bag just kind of seems... I don't know. I haven't seen any good ones. They're hard to find. I'll have to check, I'll have to check the game stores in the area here and see, because I, I haven't shopped for a dice bag in years. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, hey, know. that's other tabletop things. Dan? Curtis. I have noticed uh -oh. in our comment section that no one has <laughs> mentioned, positive or negative, uh -huh. uh, anything about the title of the next segment. And so it continues to be Stuff We're Hyped About! No games for old that name is still subject to change. It's it's a good name. It's to the point. Nobody has to wonder about what's coming next. That's fair. Just want to put it out there, though, folks. If you have another idea or you just want to hear something else, comments are the best way to communicate on this. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dan, I've gone first so much today. What are you hyped about? I okay. I had, I had something on my list until this morning, and that has bumped the thing that I had on my list off until possibly a future episode, or maybe off the list forever. Wow. Okay. I don't know. We don't know. Uh, first of all, uh, today began. Although it'll be over by the time anybody sees this, so. I, why am I even mentioning it? But I'm excited because of the Steam Autumn Sale is uh, is started today. So uh, if you are a Steam Steam gamer, I certainly hope you took advantage of uh, of those sales. What I am most hyped about dropping today was the announcement of a the first major DLC expansion for Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, which we mentioned it last week. It was a uh, the series, uh, a Let's Play series that I did starting back in May when the game was released. And I just finished it in like the end of September. I was the, <laughs> that was the finale. It was a long series. I was only doing like two episodes a week at the time. But, um, but 
they have now it's called i need to scroll down cuz it's on my it's on the second page <laughs> okay, oh first there's going to be a free dlc that's just kind of a a game update but also includes some new enemy types for oh neat for the plague marines uh, this will be out sometime in december it's called new reinforcements there's an anti-armor plague marine which will be armed with a melta gun and crack grenades this is designed to shred the armor of the Grey Knights. Yeah. Then there's the Flesh Mower Fetid Bloat Drone, which looks like it's holding a big, spiky, manual lawnmower blade contraption in front of it. For what it's worth, uh, the Fetid Bloat Drone with Flesh Mower is one of the most vicious things on the 40k battlefield. Oh, like, I'm, I'm sure glad that they're adding it to the game. Then that's yeah, gee whiz, it'll kill a it'll kill a hero in a single round of combat. Whoa. It just it just devastates for real. It just devastates. Yeah, man, it's dangerous, 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 dangerous. Okay, yeah. The third that they mentioned is a noxious blight bringer, which has abilities that can nullify the Grey Knight's armor abilities, like the Age of Shield and Fortress. Oh wow! Okay, which is big. That's you saved your ass a lot of times with the Age of Shield and Fortress. I don't think I want to download this DLC. You need to. <laughs> you need to. I do the, the, because because here's why: December sixth, the first major DLC. It's a paid DLC. I don't know word yet on how much it's going to cost, but I suspect it'll be somewhere between fifteen and twenty dollars. It is called Duty Eternal. It includes a new Tech Marine character class, which employs drones that uh, that can destroy the armor of Plague Marines, or it's got like a barrage ability. Also, and the thing that I'm most excited about is the Dreadnought. If one of your Grey Knights falls in battle, you can assign them to the Dreadnought, and they can fight on. Only in death does duty end. Oh, that, yes. In addition to that, something that was not included in the launch trailer, the announcement trailer of this new DLC is the Gladius Frigate, which is an escort starship. What you can do with it yet, I don't know. The text says, Escort starship opens up new excursions in distant locations. So, That's does neat. that mean that you can assign a strike squad to that ship and then go send it the opposite direction of the Baleful Edict and grab some of those missions that are on the opposite side of the sector before they expire? Can it attack? Is it is it used as a defensive weapon to take out Death Guard cruisers that spawn right. randomly in the sector and like roam around? Can you use this Gladius frigate to go eliminate those, thus protecting the Baleful Edict from harm? We don't know yet. That's but neat. that is an interesting aspect. That is what I am hyped about this week. I didn't know about the Gladius cruiser being a part of that. That that is pretty cool. Yeah. Um wow. Okay, well I'm really excited to see, you know, even as a person who doesn't computer game, I'm excited to see your experience with uh with this DLC. I think that's pretty neat. I also didn't know about the reinforcements DLC that they they are making the Death Guard way more dangerous. They, they are, yeah. With, with this announcement and with what I was hyped about last week, the Sororitas DLC for Inquisitor Martyr, it's just Warhammer 40k video game content is just coming out to bring me back into those games that I've already finished. But I've got <laughs> games I haven't played yet. I haven't played Mechanicus. Right. I haven't played right? Battle Sector. Like, all, there's all these... Uh, Dude, it's how they get you. It's how I don't they, know get, if I they get you do, going and coming. But now it's like, okay, do I do a playthrough for the channel for with Duty Eternal installed? I don't know. 
I don't know. And if I'm going to do a playthrough, a new playthrough, does that mean that I have to, I mean, might as well get the Castle and Crow DLC mm-hmm. character DLC that was a part of the original launch. And when I bought the game, I thought I had clicked on that option because you got it for free if you pre-ordered. Oh, oh. Pretty sure I did that, but I didn't actually get that included in my game. So I think oh, I, I think I got screwed there. But anyhow, so now would now would be a good time to to grab it. Yeah. If I'm oh, going to oh. play if I'm going to play through the game again. Well, let's put it let's put it down to the people. Um we know we're going to do Mech Warrior Mondays. We know that we're finishing oh, yeah. Vampire. But oh, yeah. uh what yeah. what what games are you interested in? Uh is it Mechanicus? Is it is it the new playthrough? Is it what, what? also though the other old men of the channel are starting their own thing? Scott is working on RimWorld, and Jeff, I believe, I don't know if he's committed to this yet, but he he has started recording Jedi Fallen Order. All big, all big things, all big things coming. So there's like other. Other old men will be doing their own solo playthroughs of games too, which will which will allow me to play through some some games and bank those episodes and then just barf them all out at once. <laughs> it's like Bleh. you want to binge uh, Chaos Gate Mark Two? Here it is. Happy April. <laughs> I would be really I would be really interested in another Chaos Gate run through with all the DLCs up mm. i think that'd be neat i think it'd be vicious it'd be well, pretty hard yeah leave a comment leave a comment Tell let us, us what know you think. all right curtis what are you hyped about i'm gonna keep mine pretty short and sweet this week um people should watch andor people I who like star it. wars yeah just started yeah. it i've only watched one episode so keep the spoiler free uh, that's that's why i've got to keep it short It's a really well done show that happens to be in the Star Wars universe. It is not going to satisfy that itch if what you want is laser swords and space wizards. But if what you really (laughs) like is seeing characters not spoil... Um... (laughs) It's just a really neat way to see the setup of the rebellion. If Law and Order and James Bond had a baby, that's oh. Andor. What? You'll understand what okay. I mean when you get past episode one. Sure. Yeah. No. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I really enjoy it. I I I don't know why it's got such low watch numbers. I. It's got to be just Star Wars fatigue. Maybe. Maybe, but it is such it is such a good show, and it grows, it grows the mythology and the universe in ways that are that were needed, but also not like exclusionary of anything else that you might like. Yeah, it brings in it brings in important things that are subtle and small. It's just. Not enough people are watching this show, and I don't want them. I don't want Disney to get the idea that this isn't good and that they shouldn't be making more of it. If anything, I hope personally, this is this is Star Wars that's made for me. Every Star Wars is made for a different person. Mandalorian is made for those hardcore fans that are just like, I want to see, I want to see the Star Wars that I had as a kid, but just matured up enough. For it to be me as a thirty or forty year old, uh, yeah, I feel like Mandalorian is our. That was the series that was made for our demographic, right? But Andor is made specifically for me and people who are like me, just you. who just who just <laughs> apparently so based on the watch numbers, who just want uh, like a really solid story that happens to take place in the Star Wars universe, and mm. I have never. Uh, had such a strong affinity to an old character as I have with Mon Mothma because of this show. Okay. Yeah. And you'll understand that as you watch the series. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. It changes the entire dynamic of how I see Rogue One, the original Star Wars trilogy. It just, yeah, it's just really neat. 
Okay. It's really neat. And I think more people should be watching it. I haven't seen anybody speak ill of Andor. Everybody that I that I follow, <laughs> whose opinions I trust, they all say it's incredible. It's an amazing new direction. And they are basically saying the same thing you're saying. They're saying you need to watch this show even if you've got Star Wars fatigue. Just just watch it as a sci-fi show. Mm-hmm. Don't even think pretend it's not Star Wars. If if Star Wars is fatiguing you, I don't know. I, I like I said I just started watching it over the weekend. So I've only seen the first episode and uh, I I like what I see so far. And and I know my wife will will be on board with me because she's a Diego Luna fan. So she will He is so good in this she show. Will, she will watch it too. So I know I don't have to watch it alone. So That's good. That's good. All right. Well, that's what I'm hyped about. I'm hyped about Andor and I I hope more of you get hyped about Andor. No games for old well, Dan, that's it. We did an episode. That's a wrap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody who already had it. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you next week. And we'll see how far we got with our goals. Oh, dagger in the back. <laughs> <I know. laughs>